start with for uh, those of us who may not be savvy about what the Detroit Month of Design is. Can you just give us a little insight into what it is, what we're looking at, what we're talking about? Sure. The Detroit Month of Design is an annual multidisciplinary design festival that occurs throughout the city of Detroit, September 1st through the 30th. And 2021 marked the 11th anniversary of the festival. And this year we had 80 plus events on the calendar. It was a hybrid program. So we had virtual events, outdoor installations and indoor events following CDC guidelines. Who's participating? Who's making this decisions about who gets to participate? Um, you know, how, how does all of that work? Sure, every year we have an open call so I call it like a call and response to the community. Detroit's design community, you know, do you have ideas and work that you would like to showcase in September? If so, apply to participate. And this year we received 188 submissions and we have a curatorial selection committee. Every year it changes. We had six people this year and they all look at the applications, give feedback. We have an internal review. And we really try to show a holistic you know, view of our community. Because it's a multidisciplinary design festival locating all around the city, you have cultural institutions, nonprofits, community groups, people working in the built environment, visual communication. And so we narrowed it down to the 80 plus that we had on the calendar this year. So when we're using the term design, you reference that it's um, multidisciplinary. And I just wanted to be clear that when we're saying design, we're not speaking specifically about, you know, the aesthetics of everything, although that is a portion of it. But um, just explain a little bit about what design, uh, what, what falls under that umbrella of design. Sure. Design overall, I define design as a process from idea to fruition. What does that look like? And that is like the definition of design. But for design core, we really categorize it into three main brackets. Design creatives working in the built environment. So that could be architecture, landscape, urban planning, interior design. Or are you a creative working in visual communication, which would be illustration, user experience, augmented reality, anything that you're kind of like creating those visuals and graphic assets that people use. And then the third bracket would be product design. Are you a craftsperson where you're making jewelry, making fashion, making shoes, or are you a product designer that's making something more industrial, like a robot or a machine? And so we have built environment, visual communication, and product design are the three main ways that we kind of describe the multidisciplinary aspects of the festival. There's also the Motown Museum, celebrated the 50th anniversary of Marvin Gaye, what's still going on. They have pop-up. Um, markers and learning opportunities along Grand Boulevard, where you're looking at album covers. And what's the role of album covers in communicating, you know, how people are addressing society and what's happening to them. Are there any plans that you guys are making for next year? Is there anything you can give us a sneak peek on or give us some insight into, you know, maybe some of the things that you guys are looking for, hoping for? Yes, you know, one of my goals is to see the festival as a platform beyond just a celebration. And you made a really good point. What's the role of the festival for learning, you know, and making learning more accessible design education? What's the role of the festival in creating business opportunities for our creatives and entrepreneurs, for the people participating in the festival? How, they, how can they can connect with more audiences, customers, or meet people in industry? So if anyone out there, it's a rolling kind of basis. Yes, we have the open call, but I'm talking to people all the time. You know, that call and response is about 12 months of community engagement because people can only participate if they know about it or know that it's available for them. And we're hoping to bring back some of our monthly programming in 2022, like Drinks by Design, where we had designers showcase their skills on a monthly basis. And it popped up. It was in a different location every month, kind of oh, leading up to cool. the Detroit Month of design and uh, we were getting 300 to 400 people a month so it was a great way to have like interdisciplinary networking 
And when you talk about strengthening your community, it's about meeting people that you wouldn't normally meet at work because they don't work there. They don't live in your community or they're not in your family. So how are you going to build those connections and opportunity? I want to look at how can the festival create non-traditional um, learning opportunities and business opportunities for people that didn't go to design school. You know, we saw that a lot with um, Sneaker House. There was one company that really stood out, Clean Sneaker Care. A young company, Daryl Blanding, started his own company cleaning sneakers. And now he's doing like 300 to 400 pairs of sneakers a month. And let's talk about those entrepreneurs when we talk about the festival and how can we lift them up?